Before we get started with all of the individual buttons that we can change throughout the examination, there are a couple that we need to look at which are important to alter before we even get started scanning the animal. So the first of these is going to be the preset. The preset is basically a button which allows you to choose the type of examination you will be performing. What this does is it changes quite a few of the parameters that are almost behind the scenes to improve the image quality that you're looking at when you first get started. In essence, what this means is that when you start scanning, you only have to make minor, minor changes instead of major tweaks. So what you'll have to do is look at the machine that you're using and find something that's called preset or setting or exam type. On this particular machine, it's under probe. And what we will be performing today is a cat abdominal scan. And so we will choose that. And as you can see, it has changed quite a few of the parameters ones that we will be changing later on throughout the examination, but also ones that are within the menu. So this means that things like contrast and some of these other ones like dynamic range and edge enhancement, we don't actually need to change every single time we start scanning. It's very helpful to not only be more efficient with our, our time, but also to ensure that we get the best possible images first off when we start scanning. So there are five main buttons that we need to know where they are and what they do to ensure that we can alter them when appropriate to improve the quality of our ultrasound image. The first of these is frequency. The frequency button is important because it helps us to achieve a balance between the resolution of the image that we see, or basically how clear the picture is, and also how deep the wave is able to penetrate. So if we're looking at something that is very, very superficial, such as, say, a kidney perhaps, or perhaps a loop of gut, or even the urinary bladder, we will want to use something that is a higher frequency setting. However, if we're looking at an organ such as the liver, which is deeper within the, the abdominal cavity, then we'll want to use a lower frequency setting. So there's always a trade-off between the clarity of our image and how far the wave is able to penetrate. So on this particular machine, you can alter the frequency up or down. So just to reiterate, for things that are very superficial that you want to have a high degree of clarity or resolution, we'll use a high frequency setting. For things that are lower down within the abdomen, in corresponding on the screen would be at the bottom of our picture, we would use a lower frequency setting, acknowledging the fact that we'll lose a little bit of clarity or resolution in the process. Another button that we need to know where it's located is the depth button. On this particular machine, the depth button is a rotating knob. And this will either decrease the depth or increase the depth. A rough rule of thumb is that whatever you're looking at should occupy about three quarters of the screen. So if you're looking at a kidney, then the kidney should fill about three quarters of the image, giving a little bit of context around it so that we don't miss anything in the, in the surrounding tissues. The importance of this is that, number one, it allows you to focus on an individual organ or a region of interest and it also allows us to alter the frequency setting to optimize the image again. Therefore, if we are looking at something that is very superficial, again, such as a kidney, and we're not expecting the wave to have to penetrate very deeply, then we can use an increased or higher frequency in combination with a decreased depth. So on this particular screen, for example, we may only be looking at five to six centimeters of depth, and therefore we could use a higher frequency setting. The converse is also true in that if we're expecting the wave to travel deeper down because we have an increased depth setting on our ultrasound image, we'll therefore need to decrease the frequency setting so that we improve the penetration and we have 
a nice image all the way through from the top or the superficial structures down lower down or deeper. A third button that can help us to optimize the quality of our image is going to be the gain setting. Now the gain is also sometimes called the brightness colloquially. It's important to realize that this is not the same as screen brightness. On most machines you are able to actually alter the screen brightness depending on where you're actually performing the exam. If you're in a darkened room such as this or whether you're utilizing it in a brighter brightly lit room or if you're even using it outside. So therefore changing the screen brightness is just altering how you're actually looking at the at the screen or the monitor. What the gain actually does is it changes the raw data that is achieved by the probe or obtained by the probe. So what it does is it takes all of that raw data and it either amplifies it or it dampens it down. And what you actually see on the image is a brightening of all of the tissues or a darkening of all of the tissues completely across the board, um, irrespective of the depth or the location of those tissues uh, within the depth scale on your, on your image. This is very subjective and you need to use it with just a little bit of caution in terms of how high you actually have it set. The gain button will amplify good, bad, and ugly. So if you have an increased noise or if you have increased artifact within your image, it will make that also more amplified or brighter. So sometimes if you're not seeing what you want to see on the image, if you turn the gain button on, on even higher, you may see more, but it may be more of something that isn't truly representative of what is in with, within the patient. So again, the gain button is a very subjective uh, alteration of the image quality, and it either brightens or darkens the overall image. The next machine control is the time gain compensation. It has gain in the title, so we think it does have something to do with brightness. And when we're looking at the actual machine, on most machines, these are the sliding buttons. Basically what the time gain compensation does is it takes into account the fact that the ultrasound wave, as it travels deeper within the tissues or deeper within the body, that it actually loses strength. What that means is that Structures that are very superficial or right underneath the surface of the probe will be very bright compared to things that are deeper down. And this is the fact that the wave becomes attenuated, loses strength as it travels from the superficial to the deeper structures. What this would actually look like on the screen if we didn't alter this or take this into account is that, for example, in the liver, more superficial structures would look bright whereas deeper structures would look more dark, when in all actuality they should be homogenous across the board for that particular organ. So what we need to do is we need to take this into account and alter our time gain compensation. So each of these buttons in and of, in and of itself is an individual gain button. So if we move each of these to the right, it will gradually increase the brightness or the gain in bands across the screen or across the image. So we can use this to our advantage in an organ which goes from the top to the bottom or superficial to deep or in any image where we want to have a homogeneous appearing picture or image which is all of the time. So the way to set this is to look at an organ such as the liver, which is going to take up the majority of the image from the superficial structures to the deep, and alter these so that the image appears more homogeneous. What this usually means is that as the, as the wave comes down, we actually need to amplify the signal that's coming from deeper down in the tissues. What this will look like on your machine is these time gain compensation buttons or these sliding buttons will be in a gentle curve. 
as they go from superficial to deep. The final machine control that we need to be aware of is the focus. What the focus takes into account is the fact that the beam, the ultrasound beam, will actually diverge as it travels deeper throughout the tissues. This means that it will be narrow at the top, more narrow, and become wider at the bottom or deeper. So therefore, we need to remember the fact that the clear, biggest resolution, the greatest resolution or clarity will occur wherever the beam is narrowest. Therefore, whatever we're looking at on the screen, if we actually place the focus position, or the focal point it's sometimes called, at the level of the region of interest, then we'll get the greatest possible clarity or resolution. On this particular machine, the focus again is a rotating knob, and we can move it up or down. On the machine that you're using, it will usually be located somewhere along this depth gauge and be indicated by an arrow or a dot or something which will tell you where the focal point is located along your, along your image. So the way to utilize this is if you're looking at your image and you have a region of interest such as a loop of gut or a kidney located on the screen, if you want to improve the clarity or resolution of that particular structure, you would simply place the focal point at that level. If you're looking at an organ such as the liver that takes up the entirety of the, of the image, then you, what you would need to do is place that focal point at the very bottom or as deep as you can on the, on the gauge. And that will improve the resolution of the particular organ all the way from superficial to deep. We actually need to acquire the images and part of this is the probe. The probe is actually what sends out the ultrasound wave but also receives it too and sends the information via this cable up to the console which will then interpret it and form the ultrasound image which we can have a look at. So the probe is actually quite an important bit of the, of the whole package. There are a few features of the probe that we need to be aware of. The first is the footprint here. And this is the scanning surface which will be in contact with the animal. In order to ensure that we're able to see the whole ultrasound image or see the whole region that we're wanting to displayed on the image, we need to ensure that this portion of the probe is in good contact with the patient at all times. Another feature is this little button. This is called the thumb mark. This is also on some other machines or some other probes a notch or a groove, but basically what it helps us to do is always be able to orient ourselves in relation to the screen. This little little knot here on the thumb where your thumb will be located corresponds to this mark on the ultrasound screen. So this M is the, the manufacturer uh, of Mindray, so that allows us to know at all times that this side of the probe will be displayed on this side of the ultrasound image. We can actually use this for our advantage in so much as if we want to see more of this side of the screen, we can actually use this probe like a torch. And if we want to see more of this side of the screen towards the thumb mark, all we have to do is point towards the thumb mark with our hand. Conversely, if we want to see more of this side of the screen, which is away from the thumb mark, then we point away from the thumb mark. It doesn't matter what orientation your probe is in. So, for example, if we have rotated our probe and we want to see more of this side of the screen, so, for example, if we have half a kidney on this side of the screen, we may be tempted to actually point this towards the cat's head, which won't actually improve our situation. What we need to do instead is point up towards the thumb mark. Utilizing it that way will help us so that we don't get frustrated when we're trying to obtain the image of the animal that we're wanting to. So just as a recap, if we want to see more of this side of the screen near the locator of the thumb mark, we point towards it.
with our probe. Thumb mark being here. So we point towards the thumb mark. Conversely, if we want to see more of this side of the screen, we point away from the thumb mark. There are five main movements that you can actually make with the probe. And it's important that we do these one at a time. The reason for that is that we want to be able to perform our ultrasound examination in a methodical way. This will ensure, hopefully, that we don't miss anything. And so that it was repeatable and it actually will save us time because we're doing it in an efficient way. So what we need to realize is that this ultrasound probe connected to this console or this machine is a diagnostic tool. It's just a way for us to gather more information to add into the rest of our, our diagnostic toolkit, such as blood work through urinalysis, through radiography, through clinical history and, and examination. And this will help to build up a picture of what is going on in the animal so that we can make a proper diagnosis and lead on until our, our medical and surgical treatment options. So therefore, we need to be able to gather this information relatively quickly, but also thoroughly. So we need to remember that the ultrasound wave comes out of the probe in this direction. This is the footprint of the probe and the ultrasound wave comes out in this direction. In order to gain a significant amount of information relatively quickly, what we need to do is move that probe so that we get lots and lots of information without too much effort. So what we actually need to do is use fanning. And what this is, is moving the probe up and down at one particular point on the animal so that we can gather as much information around that point as possible. So when we're actually sat on the patient, we will fan up and fan down. We want to be able to see everything in an orthogonal view, just like we would with a radiograph. So what we can do is once we've fanned up and down, we can come back to our neutral position and then we can rotate which is another movement we can make with the probe and then we can fan cranially and caudally. So to recap, we come onto the patient ensuring good contact and we fan up, fan down, come back to neutral position, rotate, and fan cranially and caudally. Then return to our neutral position once more. We can then do the third movement, which is sliding. We slide up to a new region and then perform the other two movements all again. So we fan up, fan down, rotate, fan cranially, fan caudally, and back to neutral position. That way we can carry on throughout the abdomen in a controlled, methodical way. The fourth movement we've already had a look at, and that's rocking, as if it were a rocking chair. So this, in essence, is allowing us to slice through bits of the body in a single plane. This isn't an especially efficient or useful way to gather lots of information quickly compared to fanning. However, it does allow us to position the probe so that we're looking at exactly what we want to within the animal. So this is where we point towards the thumb mark or away from the thumb mark. Point towards the thumb mark or away from the thumb mark. The final movement that we can make is actually pressure. And it's important to remember this movement of pressure because if you have a, a animal that has a significant amount of body fat, we may actually need to slightly compress that fat so that we can enable the ultrasound waves to get down to the region of interest that we're actually wanting to look at. So you can apply gentle pressure. Similarly, if we're looking at, at organs such as the, or regions of interest such as the aorta or the cava, what we can actually do is differentiate between those by applying pressure. 
If you apply pressure in that region, the cava will collapse. However, the aorta will stay as a tube. So this allows us to recognize, without the use of Doppler, which structure is which. can just give us a little bit of a helping hand. Now we're ready to get started scanning. Our patient has been prepped. We've applied ultrasound gel, which has sat for approximately five minutes to improve our level of contact. Our machine is set up and we're ready to go. We'll place our thumb on the thumb mark and we'll start right at the level of the ziphy sternum so that we get a good image of the liver and then we can evaluate it and see the entirety of it hopefully from one location very patient specific but uh, in this patient that will be a, a good approach to take we'll add just a little bit of extra gel just to improve our contact especially with cats they can be very sensitive to changes in temperature so if we apply the gel after rubbing it a little bit within our fingers just to warm it up a little bit nice gentle handling so we have our thumb on the thumb mark and we'll start in the sagittal plane at the level of the ziphy sternum. And immediately we have an image on our screen. We can evaluate this image and alter it to improve the quality of it, looking at those five buttons that we talked about earlier. We'll start with our depth. So we've altered our depth to include the most deep part of the liver that we can see on our screen. But it's looking very dark. So we will increase our gain. If we look at the image that we have on the screen at the moment, it's looking very good in the superficial or near field but it's starting to lose detail and actually penetration in the far field or deeper down within the tissues. So for that, we'll need to alter our frequency. We're currently at a setting of 8.5 megahertz, so that's quite a high frequency, so we'll actually need to drop that down. So we've decreased our frequency to improve our penetration. And the final control that we can look at at the moment is our focus. Our focus is actually at the middle of the liver. So if we drop that down to the, to the deepest part of the liver, then it improves the resolution all the way through. We actually haven't looked at our time gain compensation yet. So if we have a look at our image and look at to see how homogeneous it is all the way through. I'm just increasing it in the near field. I've changed our depth just to be a little more shallow, and now we're ready to start scanning the liver. It's nice and homogeneous all the way through. We're at a good frequency setting, ready to go, and the patient is nice and calm. So if we fan up until the liver disappears, and then fan down, the gallbladder will come into view, as we can see there. 
until it disappears completely. Then we come back to our neutral plane. I'll then rotate with my thumb up to the sky. So now the thumb mark is up towards this direction. And we'll fan cranially. We can see the vasculature within the liver. If you notice, I actually want to see more of the screen on the right hand side, which is away from the mark. So I'm going to point down away from the mark. So we can continue to fan cranially. And then we can fan back caudally. And now we have seen the liver.